The psalmist declares to us, sing to the Lord a new song. Shout with joy to the Lord. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Hymn number seven. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care in keeping all men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face perils which beset them. And grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. Let us read in unison, Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand in his holy arm, has he won for himself the victory? The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. 
Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make its noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord. When he comes to judge the earth, in righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. The second reading today is from Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Christ. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. 
do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues. And there will be a dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you'll be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head shall perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is not Veterans Day. This is the Sunday after Veterans Day. Veterans Day was Friday. In the church, we have a long history of doing this. We, we have a notable celebration or, or a day or an event that we want to also make sure that there is a, an emphasis put on it. And so we, we do that the Sunday after it happens. It's fair, isn't it? I mean, there's room for both of these things to go on. We certainly have that time beforehand where we, we pray, prepare for, for, uh, for the event. I'm sure like on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, you got into the attic and you got the, the flags out, you know, the little ones, and you went outside and put them there on the, on the walkway, and, or you may have broke out some, some patriotic music or music that was specific to your branch of the armed forces. You may have made a plan Thursday or something to go to a, a veterans event on Friday or to watch it on TV, you know, and then you watched it. Good job. Then what? What happens next? Well, well, we know what happens next, don't we? In 360 days, you'll start getting ready for Veterans Day, or maybe 362 or three days. So, so once we put all that stuff away, we're done. We, we're finished. And, and we, we'll do it again when it comes around again next year. So the church knows this. The church knows this is what we have a tendency to do. You know, you, you prepare some and you, you have a big, big flurry of something. And then when you're done, it's all done. And you're like, oh, I'm glad that's over. Especially if we're the ones having the party, right? But the church says, you know, if we're, if we're going to celebrate an event that happened, like Veterans Day, uh, the 4th of July, something that we're going to celebrate in the church as well and make note about it, there has to be something more to it than what we prepared for in that short amount of time and then what we celebrated on that day. And so the church comes after and says, I think we can add something to this, add something that will carry us through for the next 360 days. Because we need that. We need the something more. If we don't have the something more, we're going to fill that space with something else. You know, I love the phrase, nature abhors a vacuum. If you take something out of nature, nature will put something back in that space. It happens all the time. You know, when you've done such a great job with your garden and you've gone on vacation for three weeks and you had it all pretty when you left and you took out all those weeds that had all those spaces and now it's all blank and clean and you come back and they do too. Nature will put them right back in that empty space. If there's an empty space for something to grow, nature will put something in there to grow. You know, I can't speak for all the different branches of the armed forces. I can speak for my, my experience in the Marine Corps. 
And I can tell you that there is something that happens. So you go through boot camp, you go through your technical school, then you go out in the fleet. And the Corps, we call that the fleet because the Marine Corps is part of the Navy. So we're out in the fleet. So we get out in the fleet, you report to your duty station, and something has happened. It may have happened in part before you ever joined the service. I'm sure it's the same for all the branches of the service. It may have happened before, but if it didn't, it certainly has taken place in those two other events, the boot camp and the technical school, and now you're in the fleet. And it's something that gets you down inside and holds you. And a good thing, too, because when you get out of boot camp, you are feeling pretty fine, let me tell you. You've gone through 18 weeks of you know what, and you're doing just fine, and you got out the other side, and a lot of guys and ladies did not make it. You know they all got left behind. I, I graduated with 37 in my platoon. We started with 87. So you feel pretty good till you get to technical school when you realize that you may be a Marine now, but you don't know anything. So you spend the next 18 weeks learning the something that you're going to be doing. And when you get done with that, you feel pretty good about it until you get to the fleet. <laughs> and the fleet, you know all your technical stuff and you feel like a Marine, but man, you know nothing about being in the fleet. All these guys are running around and they've got uniforms and they look like you, but they're not. And they've got wall lockers and stuff and things and you just don't know what's happening. But there's something else that you have got, and it is at the core of who you are. I can't speak again for all the branches of the service. I think it's the same, though, but I can tell you about the Marine Corps. Down there at the core, what you have learned in boot camp, what you have taken from in your technical school, and what you have gained in the fleet, because they will take you under their wing and they will lift you up, is this pride. This pride in ownership, but it's not pride like, ah, oh, I'm the greatest brain in the world. I can do anything. It is a pride that is rooted in service. It is a pride that is rooted in doing what needs to be done. It is a pride that grips you because you look at what you've gone through, the hardships that you've endured to get to this place, and you know that you've done this for one single purpose. It is to perpetuate and hold high liberty and the ability for people to live lives of grace and mercy and self-determination. And you look out at the world and you realize these people over here can't do what I'm doing simply because they're not here. But why are they living in this oppression that they live in? And there is a burning desire to serve, to help them change, to lift them up, to see them reach a new level of their own life. And I want to go and I want to help. And when they call to service comes for members of the armed forces to go and do this thing, we are eager to go, not because I want glory, but because I want to help. And this way is the only way in this fallen and broken world that we can. Maybe it's flawed. Maybe it's horrible. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, the end result will be freedom, will be hope, will be a lifting up from whatever circumstances they're into something more. And because of that, there's preparation, right? Oh my gosh, if the military does anything well, it's prepare. Prepare and prepare and prepare and prepare and prepare and prepare. And, prepare. and you hear about ships floating around in this place or that place and ships going here and things going there and our navies all over the world. We mostly hear about the Navy, you hear about the Navy because the Navy's out there in these big things floating around this huge thing and it's going and you're like, what are they doing? You know, 6,000 men on an on a aircraft carrier all floating around in the middle of the ocean. What are they doing out there? Fishing? No, they are preparing. They're going through war games and drills and all kinds of stuff to get ready and they're getting set over and over. Every scenario you can think about, every member of the armed forces is going through this stuff. Why? Well, I, it's horrible. We, our heart breaks when we look at Ukraine and what's going on for the people of Ukraine. I mean, when I hear, hear the continued devastation of their infrastructure and realize that, you know, we'll pray to God this war is over, but what they're going to have to do just to get a normal life again, what they're going to have to go through. But even as I am heartbroken for them, I am just, I'm, I just, I feel horrible for the Russians. This is an example of an incredibly huge country which we have long thought about who are absolutely, absolutely unprepared, in every way unprepared. We've seen this now with Russian soldiers running away. You can see it on YouTube all the time. Russian soldiers doing ridiculous things, things on the battlefield that you're thinking, I, 
I learned that when I watched old Westerns. Like, you don't do that. But these guys don't know that. They didn't watch Westerns. They didn't get prepared for this battle either. And they're getting torn apart over and over and over again. This is why you've got Russians leaving Russia before they get called up. This is why you have Russians killing Russians in their training camps because they don't want to go. This is why you're having wholesale revolts in the Russian army. It's, oh, I'm, I just, I, look, I'm unprepared. And I've heard some of the interviews of these people and they say, I don't want to do this. It doesn't mean anything to me. I don't want to do this. I have nothing to do with this. I want to go home. This is not my thing. I'm not ready for this as they're standing there in these whole, holy W, moth-eaten uniforms that have been in boxes for years because nobody prepared and looked at them to find out if this stuff even works. If we don't have at the core that thing, that thing that holds us up, that pushes us out, that provides for us, we will have nothing. This is, this is this, the root, the fertile ground, the vacuum in life that leads to despondency and despair and depression. Lift up this book and put it back down. That's what I'm doing all day long. It's all I have to do. It's what I'm paid for. I'm just looking it up, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. Man, I hate my life. If I've got, it sounds like an assembly line, doesn't it? If I have no purpose beyond picking it up and putting it down, I will hate everything. I will drink. I will turn to other things. I will not have a life worth of living because I've got nothing at the core. If I don't prepare, I don't prepare because there's no point in it, because I don't care, because there's nothing down there anyway. You know, God knows this. Oh my gosh, God knows. Can I say it? Oh my God, God knows this. God made us. God looked at us and said, you know what? They're going to need something. They're going to need something for them. They, they're going to have to know this. They have to know this at the core of their being, that underneath this thing. So we have this history of taking as people, non-people of faith. We take things because we need to have something at the core and we manufacture it. We create something at the core from which we then can operate our lives because if we don't have that thing at the core, we won't do it. So I say, okay, all right, I'm lifting it up and down because uh, I'm doing this all day because I have friends. Oh, my friends over there. I'm doing this because I have friends I can talk about. Oh, I'm doing this because I'm making some money and I can buy that thing I want. I'm lifting it up and down because I'm doing stuff over there. Oh, this is really great because I've got this stuff. We've manufactured all of the reasons around ourselves in order to lift this up, but lifting this up and putting it down by itself has no meaning. It's only because I'm with a friend that I'm doing it, and that's the only thing I've got. But what happens when my friend dies? What happens when there's a recession and there's not as much money? What happens when any of the other things get in the way? All of the transitory core values that I'm holding that make this worthwhile disappear, and what happens to me? We all know what happens to me because we've seen it in years past with friends and on the news and acquaintances. We have to have something at the core. In the Marine Corps, if I was just a, a, a per, not a person of faith, that would have been the thing that held me and provided for me and sustained me and moved me forward. And it would still today, you've heard the phrase, once a Marine, always a Marine. That's because that core is solid and that core will stay there. If I'm not on the battlefield in a, anymore and I'm not in the, in the uniform anymore, that core will sustain me for the rest of my life. It'll never leave me and I'll never betray it. It has value, it has power, it has worth. But as a person of faith, there's something else below that. There is something else underneath it that I can turn to, and I do. And it's talked about in our lessons for today. This lesson about Malachi, these are all, you heard these lessons and you went, oh, these, man, these are, this is a downer, man. This, these lessons are, oh my gosh, I don't want to hear this one anymore. But let's, let's look at it from this perspective. God is telling Malachi, talking to Malachi, what does he say? God says, tell them, tell them, everything's going to fall apart. Everything is going to fall apart. There's nothing you can do. But if you prepare, you're going to be okay. If you hang on, it's going to be all right for you. Who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. It's all fall apart except for you. Paul goes on. Paul goes on to say a lot of things. You got a lot of work to do. You got a lot of stuff you got to do. And you've got to work. 
You've got to be a part of it. You've got to carry on. If you don't, you'll be left behind. If you don't, you'll not be able to sustain yourself. You don't work, you can't eat. You have got to stay. You have got to keep up. You have got to be a part of it because that's what you're designed for. That's my witness to you. It's going to fall apart. There are going to be hard times, but if you prepare, you're going to be okay. And Jesus in the gospel, this, this long, this long gospel that we had today. Teacher, you know, the heart of, the, of, of Israel, the heart of the Jewish people is a temple. They look to the temple. The temple is a symbol of the wholeness and the presence of God in their land. The wholeness and the presence of God in my heart, in my mind. This is why the rule is that even if you live far, far away, you have to make a pilgrimage back to the temple. Because it's, it's the symbol. Jesus says one day the symbol is going to be gone. It's going to be torn down. It's going to be devastated. People are like, no, it can't happen. What's going to happen to us? Jesus said, it's all going to be torn down. All of it is going to be gone. But if you prepare, you're going to be okay. If you do what's right, if you come to the right thing, not a hair of your head will perish. All these other things are going to happen. Life's going to get hard. Life's going to get tough. But you're going to be okay if you prepare. And how do you prepare? Down to that core. What's at the core of who we are? It is, the, it is the revelation of God, the relationship with Christ. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is the assurance of things unseen. It is the blessing of all things known. All things known. I pick it up and put it down. Why? Because I'm getting paid, because I have friends, because I value my job. All these things can go away. What is the core? I pick it up and put it down, and I am, have value in doing this and love doing it. I love doing it. You know why? Because I have a hand. I have an arm, I have a mind, I have an eye, I have the ability to do it. This whole thing is such a blessing from God. Every moment, every breath, every step, everything that I see, you know, this may be an unbeautiful thing. But there's miracle that I can see it. And that miracle means it's a blessing. And I can look at it, and I can give thanks to God and glory to God for the gifts that God has given me, even if they're restricted, even if I have less ability, even if my shoulder's broken and I can't throw a ball anymore. I can give thanks and glory to God that I can't throw a ball, but I can still write a name, that I can still turn a dial or push a button. At the core of everything, is the fact that I am made, that we are made in God's image. We, we need the core because we are made by the God who has a core. God has a purpose. God has a plan. God has prepared. And we are made in God's image. So we need a purpose, a plan, and to prepare. We need to. And if we don't have that as our understanding, we will make one up. And the one we make up almost always will fail. Even, even my beloved core of the core, if I am not a person of faith that will carry me through my earthly life, but in the end, it will fail. For us as people of faith, we are brought to the table to dine with our Lord Jesus Christ and see in everything that we do and everything that we have and all that we are, the blessing that God has provided for us. You know, this is not only Veterans Celebration Day. This is a celebration day that we talk about stewardship. You thought I was going to do that. Huh? You should have had this blue. Oh, where did it go? My blue card. I hope you got the blue card when you came in. If you didn't, there are other ones that are not just blue. There are other colors. You can get one when you go out. I was talking about this yesterday. Sharon, sorry. This is like round two. We were talking on the portico, so she's heard this before. Now, I want to give this to you so you understand, because not with Sharon, but this past week I've talked with people not in the parish because we're getting close to general to our annual council. And stewardship is still misunderstood. It really is. It really is. So I'm going to make it really easy. I'm using an agrarian image for you. So bear with me. Okay, we're all farmers today. All right. So here I am. I am a farmer and I have a hundred acres of land over here and I go to, go to the harvest and I harvest it all up and I take 10% of all that I harvest, all that wheat, and I give it away. Why? Why? Because I couldn't have a hundred acres of, of wheat if God didn't make it possible for me to, 
to have 100 acres of wheat. And I give that 10%, that, that 10 acres of wheat away because I want everyone else to know you guys are getting wheat from God. The only way I can give you wheat is because God made it possible for me to raise wheat. So pass it on. Here, eat. Eat as much as you can and be satisfied in the name of God, the glory of God, the grace of God. And now I take my 90 acres of wheat and I go to market. I sell my, 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 my 80 acres of wheat, right? my 90 acres, but I take the 10 acres of wheat off the top and that money, I take it and I give it away because this is also only possible by the glory of God. God, does, God wants 10% are and everything we're going to get both of them everything we have and everything we're going to get this is it doesn't end here you see it goes on to here because i can't take the the wheat the 90 acres to market and sell it if not for the glory of god if not for the grace of god if not for the power and the presence of god and so when i sell it i take that 10 percent and give that away and say this is to the glory of god so that you can know that god made this possible and then I go home and I get my family and all my people around me. And we have a big dinner and I've taken the proceeds from the 90%, which is my 100%. This is really important. I got 100 acres of wheat. I got 100% is 90 acres. Look at that. I got 100 acres of wheat and 100% of it's 90 acres. Because 10 acres is God's. 10 acres, I don't even count that. That's not mine. That's God's. I go, to the, I go to the market, I'm selling off 90 acres of wheat. My 80 acres of wheat is 100%. I don't even count the 10%. The 10% is gone before, for us today, mortgage and electric bill and pension and all. It's gone. It's not counted. I don't count it. I don't count that as my income. It's not my income. It's to the glory of God. The, all the stuff that's left is only left because of God. If not for God, I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it. So I don't count it. That's, that's my recognition. This is God. God said to us in Scripture, he says, you have to do this. You know why you have to do it? Because only by living it will you live it. Only by living it will be true to you. Only by holding it up in front of you and saying, I can't wait to harvest this hundred acres of, of wheat so I can give to God the glory that God deserves. Show God, at least in this small way, because really God owns all of it. But in this small way, I can give back to God in glory. So I get my family, and I go and I've really I've blown the bank. I got lobster, got a big lobster meal. You know, I'm doing this thing because we don't get lobster very often. I even went out and bought the real scallops, not the fake ones. You know, the real thing. And we're all we're all around the table, and we stop, and I say, wait, 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 wait. We've got to say our prayers. We got to thank God for the lobsters. Thank God for the people that went and got them because they are, they are the, the, the growers. They are the farmers of the sea that have brought them to us. And they have tied, they have given the 10% to the glory of God to bring this to us. And as we sit around this table, we need to just give thanks to God that, you know what we're doing? We're sitting around this table. Everybody here made this possible. Everybody here, by the grace of God, to the glory of God, through the gifts of God, through the blessing of God, made in God's image, everybody here made this possible. And we give thanks to God for everything that we've received, including just sitting here. If a wind came and blew all this food off the table, it would be tragic. But I would give glory to God for the moment that it happened, that the potential of eating brought us together at the table. Because God is all about potential. This is the core. Stewardship and how we live our life, the way God has instructed us to do this, is simply the outward and visible sign, the acknowledgement of the core that is at the heart of everything we do. The revelation of God, the witness of Jesus Christ, the indwelling, outreaching power of the Holy Spirit that we don't have to make up, that we don't have to substitute in, that 
as we acknowledge it and focus on it, makes everything else in our life a blessing, even the hardship of life. Because when I have a problem, it is an opportunity to me to turn to God and find solace and consolation in God's presence. Each day, each moment, every moment that we do this, this core thing, every moment that we realize that just doing anything brings glory to God, we echo the psalmist who, when we read this, in a way doesn't make as much sense, but suddenly now is in focus. Every moment, as I realize the blessing that I have been given in God, I sing to the Lord a new song. I shout with joy to the Lord. I lift up my voice. I rejoice and sing. Amen. Please stand with me. Together we will say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God, the framers of our Declaration of Independence boldly proclaimed your gift, that you have endowed us with inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yet this is a broken and fallen world where many do not know this truth to be real. Today we honor all those who have served in our country's armed forces to preserve the freedoms you have granted us and to make it possible for those who would take away our freedoms from prevailing. We pray for the men and women who have served in the Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. We pray in thanksgiving for the witness of our veterans who have served our great nation by selflessly offering themselves in its defense. We thank you for the secure, their willingness to put the welfare of others ahead of their own safety and the security of our home above their very lives. Help us all to be inspired by their willingness to sacrifice for the ideal of all that we were meant to be and what we are. We pray for the healing of those who've been wounded in body and soul, wounds both visible and invisible. We pray for those who've returned and those who are returning from conflicts around the world, from Iraq and Afghanistan, for those who served in Vietnam, Korea, and World War II, for all who were living with injured bodies and traumatized spirits to receive your solace and healing. Holy God. 
We pray for those who were unable to pray for themselves, that they will receive the blessings of our prayers offered on their behalf. Bring peace to those places where our women and men have bravely fought. Holy we pray for those who served in non-combatant roles. May they be ever aware that their service was of the same caliber, that their sacrifice preserved the peace, and that their dedication inspired those who came after them. We pray, Lord God, that you will keep all our veterans in your care today. Grant them the peace they sought to preserve for others and teach all your people the ways of peace those that those who have sacrificed so much will not have done so in vain. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Also for those people and for those concern, concerns of our hearts. Especially for members of our parish family and extended family on our prayer list. I pray especially this day for Sister Rosie and for Brother Christopher. I pray for healing for Kathy Hinkle, for peace for her and consolation, and for peace for those who love her. Pray in thanksgiving for those who worked so hard and diligently yesterday at the parish. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll pray again tonight. Thank you. I'll be there. Peace. I love you. Please be seated. Good to be with everybody. I hope that when you came in, you drove up and you, you got out of your car and you stopped and went, oh, wow, look at that. Because we did a huge amount of work yesterday. Now, 90% of it was definitely outside. There was still a, a lot of work that was done inside the buildings and cleaning, but mostly all the way along from, the, from 360 all the way back along the side of the building. Huge, huge amount, trailer load and, and uh, uh, pickup truck load full of, of uh, debris out there, natural stuff, naturally occurring things like pine nettles and like that, all taken away down along the side of the parish hall. Huge amount of work cleaning and correcting after storms and after the pipe break and like that. And down in the uh, uh, play yard uh, in preparation for fixing, at least temporarily fixing the, the pathways between the, the parish hall and the site and the parking lot. Uh, and, and noting a lot of things need to happen, like gates that are broken that need new bolts and things that we have to do. So thank you to everybody that was here that worked so hard, a long day, humorous day, fun day to do serving together. It was just, just really, really thank you. So much, so much done, so, so great. Um, and so we're probably gonna have another one that's gonna come up, the smaller one, maybe not a day, but a few days where we're calling on hands to come in prior to the bishops coming uh, in uh, the last week of Advent. And it was also time to clean up for Christmas. So it's all good. In, in the meanwhile, I have not gone through and corrected the list. But if you want to come in, I've been working that with Mary tomorrow. 
Uh, we have the list so that you can come in and see what's still on the list and then just tackle anything you want to do at any time you want to do it. I can tell you this, Mary Ann, of course, she has left and is, uh, is with her kid, her son and her grandkids uh, up in Washington, right? It's Washington State. So uh, I'm going to take a snap of the, of the uh, kitchen downstairs, all of her hard work. Don LaFoon worked <laughs> from like eight o'clock all the way until like four o'clock afternoon putting up all of the all of the uh, the cabinetry down there. So if you haven't seen that kitchen recently or the last time you've seen it, the, the image that's burned into your brain is the place, you know, like in quite a state, you should just take a trip and go down and look at it. It's just really beautiful. And Marianne just tireless, tireless in her work around the parish hall in the last year to make events like that, that changeover possible. So, um, okay, told you it's stewardship. And it, guess what? It's next week. So we've had this two weeks announcement. You've got the cards out for you today. You guys at home, you can do this online. So just go to the, to the website. If you have any problem with that, please call the parish office, talk to Mary. She can, she can tell you what to do, talk you through it. So it's on there. Uh, for those of you that are here that want to, we'll be putting these in the plate next Sunday. If you want to mail it in or bring it to the church office, you don't want to bring it to the plate. That's fine. That's okay. Um, my appeal to you is that we that we don't put it off. We make these things hard and blue like this because you know when you go home and you put stuff on the on the bureau and you walk away. We want to have it stand out. What's that blue thing? Oh, oh, I remember that. We want to have this stand out because as your vestry works to plan for uh, next year and your finance committee gets together to look at our budget. This is what's going to let us know what our budget is. So just like, the, you know, you and I, the same thing when we make a budget for next year in our home, we have to have a pretty good idea of what our budget can be. So this is why it's really important to have this. This is not the annual meeting. The annual meeting for our parish comes in January after the new year. This is the stewardship time for our, fi our, fi uh, blah, blah, our finance committee and our vestry to plan the budget for next year and the budget that they plan will be a, will be approved by your vestry and presented at the meeting, the annual meeting in January. Yes. Yes. Supposing we sign it and something happens to us. Yeah, you can always change your pledge. Your stewardship intent can always be planned. Can always be changed. I might in my lifetime before I came here, before I when I was in California, I had a uh, a a a tithe pledge set up. I was all good to go. And then I had a catastrophic family event that I just couldn't do it. And I went to my priest, Duane, and I told him, and he said, yep, I know about your catastrophic event. And I understand you're going to have to change that. Can you just, you know, please here, take, take a pledge card and redo it. And why would we do that? Because if I didn't tell Duane at St. Stephen's church in Sebastopol, that I was lowering my pledge by more than half, then the finance committee and the vestry would continue on in that year thinking that they were going to receive money that was not going to come. So the budget for the church had to change. At least we had to know about the change in the budget so that the church could make allowances or make changes or make preparations for it. So if we change our, our pledge, that's okay, things happen. But please let the, uh, the, the, your pledge secretary know so that the church can know and make allowances. By the same token, <laughs> win the lottery. <laughs> so I've, you know, I've pledged all I can pledge and I can't do any more. And suddenly I can do a lot more. Fill out that card. You can always change up the other way and, and help the church understand its budget from a, in a positive affect. So, yes, there's no harm, no foul if you need to change your pledge. That happens. It's, you know, it's between you and God, it's between all of us and God is how we relate our stewardship to this understanding of that core. And if that needs to change because, you know, God gave me 100 acres and I'm going to give God 10 acres and then there's a daggone drought and I've got 30 acres, then I just, can't, I just don't have that. I just can't do it. So I'm going to give 10% 10, 10 of that 30. I can't do that in my head real fast. I'm going to give God that three acres, right? Just say, this is for God. So it's just, it's what I'm going to do. I'm still going to maintain my, my proportionate giving in that way because I feel called to do that, but it's not going to be the same. Yeah. Okay. 
Lots of announcements here. The bull not going to go over them. I will say, who's got an update on the, uh, who wants to give the good news about the stew? Is anybody here to do that? Oh, you? you? November stews are sold out and people had come and bought all the stew that was left over from October. Not only those who had come to do it, but people who, and people are coming to Catherine and saying, oh, I forgot about it. I missed the October sale. And that's probably why we had so much extra in October because those folks forgot the October sale. Yes. Yeah, we're committed. I, I told him yesterday, I said, I said to her, oh, we're back to three pots again. She almost fell over. So. <laughs> We're doing the two pots, but we are apparently at this point completely sold out. So, who ya? Yeah. Well, you'll have to take it. Maybe there's a miraculous court lying around somewhere. We'll have to see. You have to talk to Catherine. Um, so that's the fantastic news there. So here you have this purple insert. You are invited to the bishop's ordination or consecration, rather. It is happening on December third at. St. Paul's Baptist Church on Creighton Road in Henrico. This, this place holds, I'm, I'm told, like 3,000 people. And you can go. This is the only place big enough for us. I'm not think, I don't think you can go to the reception afterward. I think that's a smaller event. But you are certainly invited to the consecration if you'd like to come and see that. If you've never been to one, then you can, you can come to it. It's open door. Anybody who can come can come. So put that on your list if you can. Uh, Stewardship Sunday, Richmond Percussion. Na, 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 na. Uh, any, any other announcements? Not please, just just please keep in mind, look them over. We're all good. Birthdays. Okay, to everybody, who you are and when's your birthday? I'm Gail, and my birthday was Friday. All right, let's take a moment and pray for Gail. Gracious and loving Lord God, we thank you for the gift of life and your continual, relentless presence in our life that you call us into relationship with yourself. Lord Jesus, we thank you for reminding us through sacrament and through companionship along the way of the, of the sacrifice and the intention that you have for us to live in relationship with you and with others. And through that relationship, Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of Gail, your daughter here at Creator, for her presence, for her companionship, for her ministry, and for her service, and for her witness of love and fidelity in your name. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to continue to lift her and hold her, guide her and direct her, open her heart and mind and spirit to your presence, and fill her with that abiding sense of your companionship along the way, that in, in good times and in bad times, she can both Give glory to you and thanksgiving for your presence and for your provision in all things. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to continue to empower her in the witness in the church and her service here and her witness and her, her the, the power of witness that she has to, to witness to others in outside of the world, not in the church, that are in such need, in such need of your companionship and of good news and of hope in their lives. And Lord, in her companionship and through her companionship, we ask you to open our hearts and minds that through her witness, we would redouble our devotion to you and seek out one another in grace and in joyful fellowship in your most holy name. Holy Trinity, we ask your blessing upon her, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. Yay. Anniversaries. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son at the core.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the obedience of your saints, you have given us an example of righteousness, and in their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of the hope of your calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by the power of your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body and blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.